So diversity in the workplace is just like I discussed, there are those overt differences that we may see amongst us, but it's about celebration and celebrating our differences and coming together for a common core mission and working harmoniously. So looking around and seeing people who look different than you, but just knowing that we all support the same mission. And to me is freely to voice their opinion. I think we forget sometimes that diversity also means simply different perspectives. And we're smarter when we're together, right? We've done studies and we know that a group of knowledgeable, pe knowledgeable people will often uh, arrive at an answer that's better than any of them would do by themselves. And so when I look around the office and I look around the, at the people that we work with, they're different ages, they're different perspectives, they're coming from industry, from government labs, long-term civil servants, military, industry folks, and everyone brings a different perspective to the table. And I think that's a part of diversity that we need to celebrate as well. Uh, the analogy that I would use for what in social inclusion should look like here at ONR is the analogy of the subway. We have a subway here in Washington, D.C. That subway has a set of simple rules. Those rules for the subway aren't meant to exclude any particular group of people. Everyone who wants to ride the subway obeys these certain rules. And when you get on the subway, you see groups from all of society. I mean, everybody uses the subway because they obey the same rules. But they all have the same goal, and they all achieve the same goal just by obeying those rules, getting on the subway, and riding it. To me, it, it gets back to personality types. And when you're hiring a diverse workforce, you should have a lot of conflict because conflict is derived from people having different viewpoints. And when you have different viewpoints, you're going to have more originality in your, in your approaches to things. Uh, when you have people all from the same viewpoint, they're going to tend to look at problems the same way. And that's, not, that's, that's the opposite of diversity to me. What the Diversity Council can do for me, but not specifically for me, for the organization, is find the ways to instruct leadership on what diversity is, more specifically what social inclusion is. Diversity now in 2017 seems to have a connotation that means only inclusion of specific groups or a specific group of people. But what diversity really is, and the spirit of it, is social inclusion. Social inclusion of all of our society. I'd like to see the Diversity Council engage the ONR staff more. We could have coffee talks or workshops or meetings because when it comes to diversity, someone has to initiate the conversation. So just having the opportunity to speak in an open forum freely so we can get to know our coworkers because when it comes to diversity, there are many layers. There are things that you may see that are different. Um, they're more overt, like gender and race. But then as you continue with the conversation, there are deeper layers, um, sometimes religious differences. So it will be an opportunity if we had coffee talks to get to know one another and just have that engagement and initiation, because it may not occur otherwise if the diversity council doesn't do it. I don't really care within legal constraints about whether a person is a government employee, a civilian employee, a military employee, or a contractor. To me, it's I want them to believe they're all part of the team and feel like they're part of the team. And so I would like the Diversity Council to take that into account as well as all the traditional thoughts about diversity and inclusiveness in terms of gender, race, religious background. And one of the things that the Diversity Council, I think, should look at is diversity of thought and, and looking at places either inside or outside of the Navy to say, uh, what different experiences should we be bringing in to manage programs? And that could be some people that maybe aren't super uh, technically brilliant PhD types but have good warfighter experience that could bring those perspectives in as program officers or people from research centers outside the Navy, NSF, areas like that, or outside of DOD in general, or, or even industry, uh, former venture capitalists or people that have worked on Wall Street that understand portfolio management and investment strategy management. 
to look at ways we can be more innovative in that in that sector. So I read the article of widening the aperture, and there was a really interesting talk about um, existing barriers. And from what I learned is that ONR leadership wants to have training to help assuage some of those existing barriers. So I want to know, has that training occurred? And if so, how did it go? I'd really like to know the results because the existing barriers, what we come in with before we start working here, those are probably the, the tougher barriers to get through. How can we go about getting more diversity in the program officer roles? We have a lot of diversity within other roles within ONR, but it's, it struck me, and I don't think it reflects ONR. I think it reflects the state of science. But how can we get more quality people with a greater diversity of backgrounds in, in the science leadership? I would uh, like to ask them if we have any initiatives for the business or support side of the house on ways to give them diverse set of experiences by rotating them amongst either different offices within O&R or outside of O&R so they could get valuable experience on how we can operate better uh, within the organization. Is, is what can they do to promote growth within the organization? I would ask them, do they really know how their people feel in their organization? And so I would ask them, if they don't, if for them to spend more time with their folks, not just in a business environment, but also maybe on a more casual environment over a social lunch that the code has or the department has or um, other type of activity like that. I would ask senior leadership to hold mid-level leadership, any leadership that's between the top leadership and program managers or other employees, to hold them accountable for having the inclusion workforce or work plan to build inclusion, social inclusion, within our organization. 